Hey, this is Nina from NV Fine Art Studio. If you always struggled with painting natural looking greens and always wondered why greens are so important in painting, the answer is simple. Green is very powerful color and usually takes a large part of a landscape painting. Furthermore, it varies significantly in hue. Even a small transition from cooler to warmer shade will give you a different perception of the space. If you use the wrong shade of green in your painting, it can bring faraway objects closer to you. Or it may have the appearance of a spring day when you are painting in autumn. Or bring a bright and cheerful mood instead of a calm and quiet feeling. To reveal the secrets of green, let's talk about three things. First, what's wrong with using pre-made greens? Second, how to mix your own greens? And the last one, where to use them? First things first. Pre-made greens. The most common are sap green, hardly ever use this one, fallow green, blue shade, brilliant color, very bright and intense, and serpentine green, probably my most used out of these three, if I mix it with raw sienna or burnt sienna to get warm greens, and with cobalt to get cooler green. If I use fallow green, I usually mix it with alizarin crimson to have a cool green for distant objects and fellow with quinacridone rose for an even cooler shade of green, almost bluish gray. For most beginner artists, sap green is a safe, somewhat neutral green that is usually present in most paint sets, similar to neutral raw sienna in yellows and neutral cobalt blue in blues. But the problem is, you can actually use cobalt on its own for the skies and sienna for lots of other things. But it is a big mistake to take sap green straight from the tube and paint all the things that are commonly perceived as green with this color. But if you really want to use it, it's best at least to neutralize it by adding sienna or alizarin crimson, ultramarine or neutral tint, depending on the hue you need. Because even if you take the most common cobalt blue and paint the whole sky just in one color of equal value, it will look flat and unrealistic. Sap green is an even stronger color than cobalt, and you may completely lose the sense of distance, perspective and atmosphere. Due to its intensity, it will draw a lot of attention to the wrong areas. If you look at this painting, you actually don't know where to look at. Left, right or center? It's hard to understand where to focus and what this painting is all about. Distant hills? Road? Or foreground hedges? Or maybe this big tree? Where's the star of the show? This painting, while being bright and happy, actually is very disconnected and without the center of attention. Here's the same painting, but with mixed greens. Look how different this is. If we put these two paintings together, you may probably notice how odd and flat the first one is. No life, no dimension, no atmosphere, no point of interest. How to progress from painting 1 to painting 2? The answer to this is to mix a variety of greens using a variety of yellows, blues and maybe occasional reds if you want to neutralize. As you can see, I've got 9 yellows and 8 blues. This is definitely over the top just for mixing greens. So, if I ask to pick most used for mixing greens, I'd go for lemon yellow, very cool and opaque. Indian yellow, still cool, but transparent. These two yellows make very fresh greens. Cadmium orange, opaque. Golden okra and raw sienna, neutral yellows. Quinacridone gold, brilliant color. And burnt sienna, staple in every palette. These are warm yellows. They make much more neutral looking greens. And for my blues, I'd go for cobalt turquoise and cerulean. This is cool blue and quite opaque, cobalt blue, neutral blue, definitely stapler in every palette, ultramarine, warm and granulated blue, in addition either indigo or paints grey. These are two darker and cooler blues to deepen or neutralize my greens. The mix of quinacridone gold and cobalt blue results in a beautiful summer tree green color. It's slightly opaque due to cobalt and vibrant due to quinacridone gold intensity. The mix of quinacridone gold and ultramarine will give you a very vibrant, transparent and granulated green. 
It is a typical mix to paint a forest. Due to its granulated nature, it will give you a nice, dense and uneven texture. Exactly what you need when you paint a tree mass. The mix of Kunakridon gold and indigo will give you an even deeper forest green, so it can be used for the shaded parts of the greens. If you want all the above, but in a more neutral state, you can use raw sienna instead of quinacridone gold. You can use these mixes for the same purpose, but with the effect of a foggy or distant greenery. In general, mixing warm hues of yellow and blue make a great range of useful greens. They are much more neutral than sap or serpentine green. You can use these greens to paint objects in the distance or foreground, in the rain, in the fog or painting a sunny summer day or a water reflection or pond, or just in general any greenery if you want to create a more subtle mood. The mix of lemon yellow and cerulean will create a very bright and opaque green. The mix of Indian yellow and cerulean will give result in a slightly warmer, but same intensity green and slightly more transparent. If you only have cool yellow and neutral, or cool blue in your palette and you think the resulting green is too intense, you can always neutralize it with red or darken with neutral tint. In general, cool yellows and cool blues will make very fresh and vivid greens that you may not see so much in the real world, probably only during early spring in the regions with deciduous trees. So, if you mix these greens, you need to keep this in mind. A cool and a warm mix will make a bit more vibrant greens than warm and warm, but not as intense as when you mix cool and cool. I call them mid-greens. These are closer to the sap and serpentine greens, and typical greens that we would see on a photograph of a tree on a summer day. I would use them if you paint in a hyper-realistic way and more after resemblance rather than suggestion. They definitely can be useful for the foregrounds, forest trees, trees and grasses under the setting sun. It really depends on how much yellow versus blue you mix. The main goal when you are practicing mixing greens is to have fun with your yellows and blues and get large variety of greens at the end. The important thing is to keep them nice and fresh, don't overmix them and also practice mixing them on your paper rather than palette, and I'm sure you'll have great results. Now I think it's time to have some fun and put all this theory into practice. I'd like to have a go at painting a spring morning landscape with the idea of keeping my greens as neutral as possible, but vibrant and somewhat realistically looking near the point of interest. As usual, my first wash is watery to keep it nice, fresh and fluid. I'm using a light value mix of cool and neutral hues of yellows and blues. I'm grabbing Hansa yellow and mixing it with cerulean and cobalt blue. I'm keeping it cooler for the distant hills, but still slightly varying the hue and adding yellow or blue to the mix to keep the interest going. As I come closer to the midground, I increase its intensity, keeping in mind my point of interest. So, I mix Hansa yellow, cobalt turquoise and occasionally add a bit of Indian yellow for vibrancy. For my second wash, I use mid-value tones. It means thicker mixtures with more paint and less water. I'm mixing cool spring greens for the background. It is a combination of cerulean and raw sienna. It's fresh and cool, but at the same time a little neutralized due to raw sienna. As I come closer to the mid-ground, I add cobalt blue and sometimes ultramarine for the shadowed parts. When I get to the area of my point of interest, I need more intense greens, so I mix Indian yellow and ultramarine and quinacridone gold and cobalt blue, and also ultramarine for the shadowed parts. For my third wash, I need thick mixtures of dark value greens. 
just for the darker shadows and details. So, it's mostly indigo or paint grey or occasional ultramarine with Indian yellow. These deep greens will emphasize the light around the focal point of the painting and make it more dimensional and alive. Here's the finished painting of an early spring morning landscape. Thank you for watching, hope it was informative. If you want to see more, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video.